Hey guys, Paradox here. Today I actually have a tutorial for you guys. I haven't done a tutorial in the longest time and I've actually recorded this exact tutorial twice already <laughs> and I just can't go one recording without just completely brain farting and not talking for 10 minutes. So hopefully we can get this done this time. If we do, that'd be great. <laughs> um, but basically I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a cube logo with different sorts of letters. Now I've done this in a few of my YouTube makeover videos and I figured it'd be a cool little thing to show you guys how to do it and uh, there is a max of three letters today I'm gonna be using two letters so um, but you can do three letters it's just you have to like draw it on the other surface I'll explain that once we get to the point where you guys can use three letters but basically go ahead before this thing starts go to the download section make sure that you have uh, paint.net make sure that you have the plugin pack and make sure that you have the font that we're going to be using so download all three of those things and install them before we actually start this tutorial and also I know that I've been like posting some Photoshop channel art things and I'm gonna be doing Photoshop um, but uh, I have a few pre-recorded videos that I've already done in paint.net so after I upload all of those I will be completely Photoshop for channelers and things like that I just wanted to throw that out there because I haven't really talked about uh, pre-recorded videos yet so hopefully that that makes sense to you guys but anyways here we're gonna go ahead and start into the tutorial so if you haven't downloaded this stuff make sure you download it alright so the first thing that we're gonna do is hold control and press in and make a new document that's 800 by 800. This is a good profile picture size. I usually do this, well I, I always do this, so 800 by 800. Next thing, figure out your letters. I already generated two letters in the epi in the video that I recorded already. I generated two letters and then I realized that I wasn't really talking that clearly during the video. So. I'm going to use the same letters just because I already know how to work with those and I can get this done a lot faster. So my two letters are going to be A and L. I just went to like a random generator site and generated those. So next thing that we're going to do, type the letters and select the font that we uh, downloaded. It should be called Cube. And the first thing that I notice is the A uh, and the L are on the same surface. If you don't understand what I mean by that, basically the two letters are the th well yeah the two letters the first two letters cannot be on the same l layer so we can see that this a is on the top face of the cube and this l is on the top face of the cube so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this a lowercase and that will make the layer side change and it works sometimes with uh different sorts of letters so like let's say we put the A in capital and we put the L in lowercase. That works as well. I just personally like the A uh, lowercase and the L uppercase because I think the first letter should be on the front side. So once you have your layers laid out and they're not on the same surface, uh, go ahead and just type one of them on a new layer. Then make another new layer and type the second letter and making sure that they're still not on the same surface. Next thing, I'm gonna go ahead and object align, center both both letters. And the first thing that I see is that these letters are not lined up. So basically what I wanna do is drag the top layer to line up perfectly with the bottom layer. So we can see that the square for the top surface and the square for the front and the square for the side are all the same uh, position on both letters if that makes any sense at all I don't really know alright now that we have this we're gonna start deleting stuff that we don't need that are overlaid so these two letters are actually perfect and they have like no overlay at all I'll go ahead and um, hop into a new document and show you what I mean by overlay real fast just because these have like none at all so let me hop into a new document real fast alright guys so I just hopped into a new document and my two letters are H and G and if we center both these two actually line up perfectly as you can see but there's some H over top of the G and this is what I'm calling overlay so basically we'd have to go to the H layer and delete the lines that are overlaying our G if 
that makes much sense. But our L and our, um, uh, what was it? A and L don't have any overlays, so we don't actually have to do very much of this. And same if there were any G on this, but basically, we're, we're set to go. <laughs> so we don't need this document anymore. Don't save that. But um, here we have our letters, and the only thing that I see is messed up is this side area, right? So first thing that I notice is this A is kind of getting cut off by the L, but I don't want another A over here. So I'm not really gonna, you know, delete this line right here and delete this. And this is actually when the third letter comes in. Let's say we did want another A. All we'd have to do is make another layer on top here and then just start drawing some white lines right where the cutoff comes. So we can see, we wouldn't see any of this black right in the middle here. And I'm starting to get to that point where I'm not talking very much, just because these things take a little bit longer and I can't just say everything as fast as I want to. And then we can just go to the bottom layer and delete any black. And then we'd see, we'd have another A. Now, the problem with this is that sometimes it isn't very symmetrical and it, it doesn't look like an, the actual letter. Like for example, if we wanted to do a P, what we could do is we could continue this black line, right? And make that three. I always do thickness of three when I'm doing these overlay lines. And then we could do the white line right here and then delete this like bottom side and we'd have an A and L and a P. And that kind of works sometimes, but this is why I don't really like the three letter thing is because you have to like draw it onto the other surface. And that's basically how you do the three letter, the three letter cube. Um, you just draw the letter that you want onto the uh, right uh, surface, just because some of these letters don't have an actual right surface that displays the letter. It's usually on the front or the top. So that's just a thing to do. If you want three letters, you don't really have to, but I'm not going to be doing that in this tutorial. So let's go ahead, delete all these white lines, and then just start adding in some design, really. So we have a new layer, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a straight line like this. And then I'm just going to delete all of the A that's in this middle part right here. And then we have like two separate boxes that are lined up. Pretty cool. And another thing. Uh, I'm gonna do is go ahead draw straight over make sure that we're on three for the thickness uh, draw straight over the black line like this and then select our white again draw straight up and I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit quieter as I take more time with these so I apologize for that but then we can just delete any black on the center which we'll have to go to a layer down to actually delete this so sometimes you start to erase and there's nothing on that layer so just go to the layer beneath that and it should work but yeah basically we have our black lines layer and some design our L layer and then our A layer and the last thing that I want to do before the next step is just go ahead and go to the very top layer and then just add a white line here and then a white line here. And then I'll go back to the A layer and then just delete this line right here. And then also the L layer overlaps that line so we can start deleting with the L layer selected as well. And then we're left with something like that. All right, so now we have basic the basic area set up. So we're gonna merge these three layers down and we're gonna select our magic wand tool and then just select randomly and we should see that there are some random white lines right so just hold shift and click that and you should see anywhere that you put some white lines uh, they should be selected just press delete just because when we try to align this later we don't want random white lines the next thing that we're gonna do create a new layer and thickness of three for the line and then I'm just gonna go over every single line that might look a little bit uh, weaker than some of the others so for example some of these lines don't need it but some of these lines like this one right here definitely need a little bit of a thicker um, coating I guess you could say so go ahead and 
coat all of your lines to get that better thickness, I guess you could say. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, and once I'm done thickening everything, I'll come back and show you the next step. Alright guys, so we thickened some of the lines. I think it makes a big difference, especially with some of these letters being a little bit, you know, cut off sometimes where the lines get a little bit too thin. So uh, definitely thicken the lines, and then we can merge these two layers, and we should just have the outline of our cube. So. Now what we're going to do, you can go ahead and align this to the very center if you want. It doesn't really matter at this point, but I usually do. And then the next thing, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this outline layer. So we'll have two uh, black outline layers. Then we're going to select our color. I did red for the first time, so I'm going to do red again. And basically, just start adding some color. Now, I usually, what I do to color is I find a really nice color that I like, right? So that's a good red. And then I'll select both letters, or all three letters, and I'll make them that color. And then what I'll do is I'll find a really defined side. So like this rectangle right here and this rectangle right here, they're basically on the same side. This, this is what I look at. So I'll find a different color from that red, like an offset. So maybe like a lighter red, and I'll paint those two. And then I'll look to all the other boxes and weird shapes that we've made, and I'll look to see which ones are on the same side. Well, this one's on the same side, so I'll paint that the same color. Same with this one, same with this one, and that's all for that color. So, basically, just find the same sides and paint them the same color. And the other thing that I usually do, sometimes this rule doesn't apply, and we see that when, you know, this A right here is the letter color and then this box right here is actually on the same surface as A but we don't want to color that the same as the letter because then it would look like a letter but we don't want that so what I'm gonna do is every color that's on a letter side so for example this is on the top L is on the top this is on the top I think and L is on the top and this is on the front and the A is on the front those three are all gonna be the same color but it's gonna be an offset from the actual letter color so what I'll do is maybe maybe I'll select this color right and then I'll just darken it like just by a tad and then that way we can notice it right and also something to think about is when you add these you know these two are on the top and these two are not you know on the same side I noticed that we don't really want two colors right next to each other so what I'll do is I'll like brighten it just just a little bit so that way two colors aren't directly next to each other and um, we still basically get the same color for the same type of sides I guess all right we have our color in now all we got to do is add the outline and add the background so what I'm gonna do duplicate the color layer and go to effects go to object go to drop shadow and this is where sort of craziness starts to come in. Turn the blur radius all the way down and the widening radius pretty much all the way up. And then you're going to select some random color, like something that you could definitely see against the color that you chose for the letters. So I'm going to do like a neon green. And make sure that when you do this, you do keep original image is off. That's very important. If you don't have that off, it's going to mess up later steps. So make sure that you have that off. Press OK. And then, once I usually have the outline done, I'm going to go ahead and change the white to black just because I think it's easier that way. And then I'm going to create another layer on top of this green neon layer. And what I'll do is I'll select black and I'll just start to um, delete some of these mess ups in the drop shadow. So for example, there was like a random green splodge right there. So we'll delete that and then what I'll do is I'll go back to the green layer, select this green that we chose, and then I'll start covering in these, you know, little bumps that happen when uh, we have a corner. So like when there's a corner, it starts to bump in there. So delete all that. And if you see any white in here, you can delete it. Um, it's going to be a lot more noticeable. Uh, once we're finished so I would recommend deleting it if you see any 
but it, it's really up to you. I don't think it's going to cause that much damage. But then we'll merge the black and the green, or really any layers that have to do with the green. And then we'll delete the black lines. And there we have just a, a green cube. So if we hit everything else, just be like a, a green diamond, kind of. I don't really know. But basically that's what we'd have. So uh, we're going to duplicate the green layer, right? And then on the very bottom one, go ahead, go to effects, go to object, go to drop shadow. And now we're going to select a white line. Now you can do whatever color you want. This line is going to stay. So like the green, it won't be there anymore. Like we're deleting all the green later. But whatever color you choose for this white line, and that was in like quotes or whatever, um, basically that's going to stay. So make sure that it's a good color. I always do white just because it's good against the black. You could do a red if you know your color's red like this one is. But it, it just, it's really up to you. So I usually do around 10 uh, widening radius. I always keep the blurriest down for these. these This tutorial, always blurriest down. And make sure keep original image is unchecked again. Uh, same thing for the green if I didn't say it. But make sure that that's unchecked. So press OK. And then basically if we hit every layer, we just have a white cube. And that's what that keep original image does. If we kept the original image, it would be like a green and then a white, and it, it's, too, it's too confusing to really get into. But basically, go to the green layer, select all of the green with the magic wand, go to the white layer, and just press delete, and then we can delete the green layer. And then we have just like this white outline around our colored letter. So, now you can save this as a PDN file, so you can come back and edit each layer individually, so if you wanted it to be green we can you know go to layers hue slash saturation and change the hue however really we wanted it does it doesn't really matter but i'm gonna keep it red and then we could also go back and change you know the white with curves and then you know change the rgb maybe like like aqua and then we could change it around i don't know but I'm not really going to be doing that, so if you do want this to be bigger, because like let's say when you first made it, it was a little bit too small to like really see from far away. We're going to merge all these three layers down, keeping the black background separate, and then we can just select the move tool and just hold shift and drag out one of these corners, and that will make the image bigger. And I actually just did that for the back black background, so make sure you're on the right layer and then start dragging out holding shift and that's a little too big honestly um, I thought our size was pretty good not gonna lie but I just kinda wanted to show you guys that you could do that if you want and then again object align center both and there you go that's all you really need for a letter logo hopefully you guys enjoyed this little tutorial if you did please do a like comment and subscribe and uh, I'll see you guys next time peace